My name is Edu Okay. I'm the Managing Director of Azura Power Nigeria. Power is a value chain. You can't really call out one. I think the problem we've had in the past 30, 40 years is that we've always focused on one. Like when Obasanjo came in, everybody talked about generation. So we focused on generation and of course, we are still where we are. Because for you to generate power, you need to have gas infrastructure to produce the gas, have the gas transportation infrastructure to transport the gas. Then you have the generation infrastructure to generate that power transmission infrastructure to transmit it, and finally the distribution infra infrastructure to distribute it to homes. If any of that value chain breaks, you're not going to get anything. So if you don't have gas, you can't produce power. And if I produce that power and TCN cannot transmit it, it is not going to go anywhere. It will be a stranded asset. If TCN puts in a substation until you go to your home or your office or your factory and flick on the switch and it turns on, that thing is useless. So there is no crit no particular critical infrastructure. It's about the whole value chain being working together. What is missing is money. The problem we have is that that power, starting from gas, transformed to power, flows all the way to homes, and money does not flow back. Because money does not flow back from, from that distribution consumers to the end, there is a gap. And within that gap, you now see TCN cannot replace this equipment that is being using. Generator cannot replace its own. The gas guy cannot replace. So it's not infrastructure that is missing. It's money that is not flowing back. The day money starts flowing back 100% from consumers to the gas producer, I'll tell you that everything will just be fixed. It will increase. I mean, I don't have the actual number, but from what the regulator said, they, they said that about 15% at Nigerians that are on that band A and they give about 40% of the revenue, you know, that kind of thing. So I expect that if that's the case, you're expecting like 40 to 50% increase in what the discourse remit to the system. 40% is good, but it's not. It's still not enough. That's the reality because there is still a shortfall which government has to bear until that shortfall is completely bridged because nobody is going to build infrastructure until he knows how he's going to recover his money. Until that shortfall is bridged and then people see it flowing, then all of a sudden you say, okay, if I build a power plant today, I can recover my money over the 20-year period. And as I'm building that, somebody will say, if I build a gas processing facility, I can recover my money then you now see the flow of money going. But because that money is still not flowing, yes, government is doing everything they can. They want to bridge the gap. Instead of discourse, I will tell you that as a generator, last month, the discourse only remitted 9% of their invoice, 9%. So now think of it, if, if I want to build a power plant, what it means is that for every 100 Naira I invest, the discourse will only pay me 9 Naira. I'm not going to do any other investment. So until such a time that this goes, start remitting that 100 Naira, you won't see a lot going on. That's why anybody that wants to invest today will say, I know that the discos are not doing it. I need some sort of guarantee. Government will have to guarantee me that they will pay me the balance. So if those things are not working, nobody will invest. One of the reasons I came here is, Powering Nigeria Conference has come up to be come up, kind of some sort of foremost industry event. You can see today the Minister of Power himself was here, you know. Um, a reg the regulator was represented, industry professionals, because one of the issues we normally have is where you have conferences, people talk, but the decision makers, policy makers are not there. You can just talk as a private sector guy, you are just doing a talking shop, you know, that kind of thing. But we are, one of the things I like about this is the engagement of both the policy makers and investors together in a room to say, what do we need to do to fix the system? I give kudos to business there. They should continue it. And the caliber of panelists you have today, the caliber of speakers will tell you that business there is now the foremost event, event organizer for the power sector.